In dramatic early morning decisions, area voters pick a pair of new leaders by the slimmest of margins. Good evening, everyone. I'm Michelle Marsh with Ernie Anastas. Tonight, the aftermath of an election with some startling results. Well, the two major contests in yesterday's voting ended now in photo finishes, with the results unclear until the wee hours of this morning. When the dust settled, Rudolph Giuliani had been elected as New York City's next mayor, and he won by nearly the same slim margin that he lost by four years ago. Giuliani captured 51% of the vote to incumbent David Dinkins' 48%. Conservative George Marlin got 1%. Channel 2's Marsha Kramer has more now on the election and what it means. She's live at City Hall. Hello, Marsha. How you doing, Ernie? All well, right. you've won the New York City mayoral election. What do you do now? Well, you don't go to Disney World. What you do is you go to City Hall, you meet with Mayor Dinkins, and then you embark on a five-borough tour to thank voters. What I think we both want to say to the people of the city is that it doesn't matter uh, for whom you voted yesterday, whether you voted for me, for David Dinkins, or you decided not to vote, or you voted for any of the other candidates. Today, we're all New Yorkers. That was Mayor-elect Giuliani meeting with the current occupant of City Hall at City Hall. It was just hours after Giuliani defeated Dinkins in a bitter and crushing defeat. Giuliani won by about 44,000 votes in an election that split on racial and ethnic lines. Giuliani began the healing process immediately in his victory speech last night. Starting tomorrow, we begin the process of reaching out to every community in New York City and saying to every community, we have common bonds and common interests together as New Yorkers. That my son Andrew's future, my daughter Caroline's future, your children's future, your grandchildren's future, no matter what race, ethnic background or religion, we're bound together. But with little sleep, he got up to read the morning newspapers with his wife, Donna Hanover Giuliani, and make the rounds of the morning talk shows. We caught up with the couple and asked Donna if she would be the Hillary Clinton of New York. She's hardworking and earnest, and uh, there's much to admire about her. But she's a lawyer, and I'm a journalist. And I see myself more going out into communities and visiting nonprofit agencies and bringing back what people are concerned about to Rudy's attention. The meeting with the mayor produced a statement of healing from Dinkins. Now more than ever, the things that unite us in this city must stand taller and weigh greater than the things that divide us. Then Giuliani went off to try to heal on his own, stopping in all five boroughs. His first stop was Harlem, and among those present were the Reverends John Brandon and Calvin Butt. I thought that it would be appropriate that the first place that I come would be Harlem, because I really do want the African-American community to know that irrespective of the vote in yesterday's election, that the election is over, that I want to be the mayor of all the people of New York City. The day also had its bittersweet moments. At the City Hall meeting, Dinkins was asked what he plans to do now, and this is what he said. Uh, like, like most people, uh, uh, public figures, you get offers from time to time, and I'll be weighing and trying to decide how I'm going to pay the rent, where I'm going to live, uh, you know, things of that sort, some real, you know, uh, um, you know, you want to live someplace where you've got a good laundry nearby, you know, things like that. Well, the move from a Dinkins administration to a Giuliani administration has already started. Giuliani asked his campaign manager, Peter Powers, to head the transition effort for him, and Mayor Dinkins called on First Deputy Mayor Norman Stiesel. And late today, the mayor issued a memo to all his, his uh, department heads asking them to uh, fill out memos of no more than 10 pages telling of the problems, successes, and failures in their department to help the Giuliani campaign along. Reporting live from City Hall, I'm Marcia Kramer, and now back to the studio. All right, Marcia, and Rudolph Giuliani was the only winner on his fusion ticket. Mark Green won easily, beating Republican liberal Susan Alter in the race for a New York City public advocate. Green is the first person to hold that new job. And in the fight for New York City controller, Democrat Alan Hevesy defeated Republican liberal Herman Badillo, who was trying to make a political comeback. We all have to work together to make sure that there really is one city with one future, all of us in it together. It is a time for healing. This has been a very tough campaign season. Hevesy is promising to revamp the office to make it more effective and less political. And the other major race ended with Christy Whitman elected as New Jersey's first woman governor. For incumbent Jim Florio, the closeness of the contest was very similar to 1981 when he lost a very tight battle with Tom Kane. 
In the end, Whitman had taken 50% of the vote to Florio's 48%. New Jersey correspondent Ren Scott live for us right now in Trenton with more. Ren, what are you hearing today? Well, you know, Ernie, uh, Mrs. Whitman is clearly wasting no time getting her new administration underway. Today at a press conference here at the State House, she announced the first few members of her transition team, and we are told she could possibly announce the first few members of her cabinet as early as tomorrow or perhaps the end of the week. And today, Mrs. Whitman also said that her election is a clear message to Washington that people are tired of tax and spend. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Lynn, 15 times for her first official press conference, the governor-elect arrived on the same bus that served her so well during her campaign. And then she walked into the State House to a standing ovation from about 200 supporters and Republican friends. And then after warmly thanking Governor Florio for his pledge of assistance during the transition, she asked even her detractors to come together for the good of the state. And while I realize there are many of those who didn't vote for me, I want to tell them that the plans and the things that I want to see happen here in this state are going to benefit everyone in this state. But that's what it's all about. And of course, the biggest benefit Mrs. Whitman has planned is a 30% income tax cut, which she says she will implement in her first three years. Today, she said the first 10% cut will come in July of 1994. And she again pledged if she does not keep her promise, she will not seek a second term. What I talked about on economic policy was not a campaign promise, it wasn't a political promise, it was a promise for governance, and that's how we're going to do the business of New Jersey. I'm proud, likewise, that we all faced up to our problems in this state, and I hope that we will not go back into the areas that we have moved forward on. As for Governor Florio, he has made no public appearances since last night's concession speech. But staffers say he is handling the defeat well and stands proud of his administration and the decisions that it made. He knows that when you go into an election, you go into it with the possibility of winning and the possibility of losing, the possibility of being close, not close. It was almost a statistical dead heat. Under our system, the person with a few more votes gets to have their crack at governing, and that's the way it should be. And now the torch is passed to Christy Whitman, an untested leader who is promising big change. I am the first woman to become governor of the state of New Jersey. I'm the first candidate to challenge her to defeat an incumbent in a general election. That says something, and I have pledged to the people what I want to accomplish, and I'm going to get it done. And today, Mrs. Whitman also said that she does plan to live at the governor's mansion at Princeton at least during the week. And when asked by reporters if she thought perhaps voters were skeptical because she was a woman, she said, that's a real possibility, but when I take office, that perception will change very fast. That's it in Trenton. I'm Ren Scott. Let's go back to Michelle in New York City. Thank you, Ren. There were also several important propositions on yesterday's ballots. The question in Bergen County, New Jersey, should blue laws that ban stores from opening on Sundays be re repealed? Well, the answer, no. The blue laws will remain in effect. In New York City, should elected officials be limited to two consecutive terms or eight years? And the voters said yes to that one. And should Staten Island secede from New York City? Residents there said yes. The state legislature must now consider the measure. On Long Island, Nassau County Executive Thomas Galata squeaked by with enough votes to win his third term. The Republican incumbent beat his Democratic challenger Benjamin Zwern by 4%. In the Nassau County District Attorney's race, Dennis Dillon was elected to an unprecedented sixth term. And another Republican incumbent, James Catterson Jr., remains the Suffolk County DA. Well, there were a lot of tight races, but one in Westchester, in fact, is so close that it hasn't even been called. A judge today ordered voting machines impounded for a recount in the contest for county executive. Republican incumbent Andrew O'Rourke declared victory last night with the narrowest of margins, 49 to 48 percent. But that's just too close for Democratic challenger Richard Brodsky, who is refusing to concede. There's a principle at stake. For too long, we let things happen, we rolled over. We're not going to do that tonight. We're going to go to a recount, we're going to see what happens, and we'll make an announcement based upon that recount and when the absentee ballots are counted. Four years ago, Brodsky lost to O'Rourke by six points. We have a lot more to tell you about tonight. Fire threatens multi-million dollar celebrity homes. Coming up, 
The latest from Southern California as wildfires burn into the Malibu area. And later on tonight on Channel 2 News, state motor vehicle workers charged in an alleged scheme that may have let dangerous drivers on the road. The story coming up when we continue. Channel 2 News, sponsored by your Tri-State Cadillac dealers. Every day, Wall Street speculators gamble on hearsay and rumor, unknown quantities. Smart investors stick with what they know. And that argues for the 1994 Cadillac Eldorado. Quality is unsurpassed. So take home a new kitchen today from Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. When the billionaire heiress to the Mars Candy Company filed for divorce, she and her husband began a real-life War of the Roses, the battle for the candy-coated billions on hard copy. Tonight at 7, then at 7.30. On the next Entertainment Tonight, imagine David Letterman on The Gong Show or Michael Jackson on The Dating Game. Chuck Barris is opening up his vault, and you won't believe the footage we have on your favorite stars only on the next E.T. Tonight at 7.30, right after hard copy on Channel 2. With Nautilus and free weights and stair climbers and treadmills and aerobic classes and a 30-minute workout program, Bally's has a lot to offer. Then again, we have very little to offer, too. Get started at Bally's for just five bucks. Call America's favorite health club at 1-800-WORKOUT. Any way you look at it, this is some offer. Diana Moore. She's smart. Not because she reads the Canterbury Tales in Middle English or knows the incubation period of an ostrich egg. She's smart because she bought Savings Bank life insurance from her community savings bank. At age 30, Diana's first year premium was just $84 for $100,000 worth of SBLI. Now that's pretty smart. SBLI, the smart way to buy life insurance. Call 1-800-GET-SBLI. Fire tore toward the sea today as wildfires continued to burn in Southern California. The fire started yesterday in Calabasas and headed out of the hills and into the exclusive seaside town of Malibu. The flame set fire to dense Santa Monica mountain brush and threatened multi-million dollar homes in the coastal town of Malibu, noted for its celebrities. Homes to such stars as Bob Newhart, John McEnroe, and Larry Hagman were evacuated, and a 45-mile stretch of Pacific Coast Highway remained closed. We get the latest now from Lonnie Lardner in Malibu. The battle continues, but the war may soon be won. With winds subsiding, firefighters finally got the upper hand on a blaze that's claimed more than 35,000 acres and hundreds of homes in Malibu. At daybreak, the flames were still soaring, but that's when the Santa Anas faded and when the air assault began. Helicopters dropped huge buckets filled with water and cargo planes painted the hills with flame retardant chemicals. It made the difference. At this point, we're declaring that we've got the fire uh approximately uh, 35 to 40 percent contained. However, we are being very, very cautious here, and uh, I don't think we're out of danger. We, until we get the, a line or around the fire, we get it tied in, uh, we're going to be very, very cautious, and we would advise the public to be prepared, to stay alert. Just like last week, the fickle fires gutted some multi-million dollar homes, but miraculously spared those right next door. Residents, some rich and famous, are just now trickling in to find out what, if anything, is left. I feel really lucky to have gotten this far. It was like 30 checkpoints to get through here just to see if the house was here. And we're, we're in a little island. The rest of the place looks like the moon. Many homeowners were upset that they weren't allowed to stay and fight for their homes. But everyone agreed, were it not for the courage and stamina of these firefighters, this is a disaster that could have been worse. In Malibu, Lonnie Lardner for Channel 2 News. That's an incredible story. Woody Allen may be getting his own brand of justice this evening. A hearing is being held in Connecticut right now on Allen's request that a Litchfield County state attorney be disciplined for what he said. Frank Mako announced two months ago that the state was dropping its investigation, although there were probable cause, or there was probable cause, to believe allegations that Allen had sexually abused his daughter, Dylan. The State Criminal Justice Commission is now deciding whether to discipline Mako for or, or to dismiss Allen's complaint. Michelle? Still ahead this evening, these, where are they? 
girl are the Radio yeah, City Rockettes. Why are they getting a kick out of the subway? And Stormfield will have the latest on the weather for the rest of the week coming up in just a minute. It's never been your style to live like anyone else. So why start now? The American Dimensions Collection from Ethan Allen. Eclectic and most agreeably priced. For people who really love to live at home. Right now, there's a sale going on at your local Ethan Allen. How's this? The 94 Cutlass Supreme Special Edition for $16,995. Or you can smart lease it for $275 a month for 36 months. It comes with a driver's side airbag, anti-lock brakes, power windows and locks, AM FM cassette, and more. For the best deals, see your good old guy now. ShopRite saves me money in so many ways. ShopRite keeps doing more to save you more. The more ways, the better. I get great values on the things I need most. The proof is in the prices. USDA Choice Boneless Bottom Round Roast Half Price, $1.59 a pound. Red or White Florida Grapefruit, four for 99 cents. Wesson Oil, $1.99 and save $4 for Walt Disney's World on Ice Aladdin with ShopRite's discount coupon. We save you money. Thanks, ShopRite. ShopRite does it right. Well, I'm glad the president's doing something about health care reform. He's right. We need it. But some of these details. Like a national limit on health care? Really? The government caps how much the country can spend on health care and says that's it. So what if our health plan runs out of money? There's got to be a better way. There is a better way to reform. Call this toll-free number for the facts. Call today. Now to the matter of our ever-changing weather. Ah, uh, yeah. Tomorrow's Thank gonna goodness be okay, right? That. Yes, it will. Well, that's the whole weather picture right there. Back to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Oh, well, we'll talk about the weather a little bit. Hi today, a cool day. Lots of clouds out there. Temperature outside has actually warmed up in the last hour. That's kind of unusual. Uh, no real reason for it. Just a little bit of luck, and the wind's coming out of the southwest at 9 miles an hour. Might have helped a little bit. 48 degrees. Uh, high today was 50 overall. And what we are looking at right now and currently, temperature uh, around is 48, and it's going to be staying on that way. Kind of dull around. Lots of clouds coming through as the frontal line passes by us. The good news is, is out behind us, we're going to, going to be getting some sunshine. The problem is, as you can see right in here, it's a very thin line. Some showers out there today. This is the latest uh, radar. Notice how most of it breaks up as it gets close to New York City. Good bit of activity down to the south of us, also to the north. Most of it, good news, is coming through the uh, reservoir area, and we could use some water there as the levels there are still about 24, 25 percent below normal for this time of year. 43 degrees tonight, not as cold as last night. Then tomorrow we will have a pretty nice day. Again, temperatures warming up just a little bit. And as you can see, 45, getting up into the mid to upper 50s range. The five-day forecast showing the sunshine tomorrow, giving way to clouds late in the day, increasingly windy conditions Thursday night. And Friday, a rather gusty, overcast, and wet day as a large front makes its way through a pretty strong system moving from the west, then clearing up a gloriously sunny uh -huh. day, okay. both Saturday and Sunday, but lots of wind and Great. quite chilly. Make sure Anna has a nice warm hat. Absolutely. Okay? All, All right. right, taking the subway to work can turn into a little bit of a boring routine. You know about that. But some transit riders were treated to a free token of fun today as they got a special kick down under. The world-famous rockets, or rockets. <laughs> what hour is this, by the way? Rockets gave strap hangers a sp <laughs> special show this morning with an unprecedented musical performance on a subway platform. The Rockettes kicked up their heels on the Lexington line, performing numbers from their upcoming Radio City Christmas Spectacular show. You know, I got about two hours sleep last night. I don't know whether they the, the Rockettes... They watched your coverage. Sure they you know, did. They were up all night with us. <laughs> They're still kicking. Okay. We have a lot more coming up for you. Yes, we do. Authorities bust some uh, state motor vehicle workers, charging them with a scam that put unsafe cars on the road. We have the story when we come back. 
Academy Award winner John Voight is Woodrow Call. The only friend he ever trusted is dead. To Captain Augustus McCray. The only son he ever had. You're thinking I'm bad seed. It's probably the truth. Needs more than he can give. You're right by giving Newt your name a long last. And his only dream could cost him his life. Murdering just to get more grass. It's a hell of a sorry thing. Return to a time of courage. Return to Lonesome Dove. Sunday, November 14th. Some people hate to stop for gasoline. We do it for a living. Just going from one Sunoco station to another to another. Checking to make sure a gallon is truly a gallon. That the octane you pay for is the octane you get. That the gasoline is as good coming out of the pump as it was coming out of the refinery. So next time you're moaning because you have to pull over for gasoline, think of us. We have to stop 1183 times this year. Your Tri-State Quality Ford Dealers present Susan Lucci and the Romantic Approach. Only your Ford dealer has five of the ten best sellers in America. The Hard Sell Approach. Hey, five of the ten best sellers in the U.S. of A are at your Ford dealer. The Humorous Approach. There are five of the ten best sellers. No matter how you say it, only your Ford dealer can give you 2.9% financing on a new Ford Taurus. Police arrested dozens of workers in a Westchester motor vehicle office today. As Chris Borgen reports, they're charged with running a scam that may have put dangerous cars and drivers on the road. 23 employees of the New York State's Department of Motor Vehicles arrested, charged with illegally selling New York State driver's licenses, vehicle registrations, and state photo IDs across the counter to whoever had the money to buy. The charge would be $108 for a $58 transaction, so to anyone in the vicinity, it would appear to be a legitimate transaction, vehicle registration documents at a cost of $108. The scam was uncovered during a two-and-a-half-year-long joint investigation by the FBI, the Westchester County Police, the State Inspector General's Office, and the Department of Motor Vehicles. Undercover agents and confidential informants posing as buyers would meet with contacts and intermediaries who would send them, with the appropriate password, to the DMV person who would make the sale. Once an individual leaves the office in possession of valid identification documents issued by a, an official of the Department of Motor Vehicles, there's really no way to determine if that document has been obtained illegally or produced fraudulently through some sort of, you know, illegally obtained means, in, in this case, a, a cash payment. It was not one master rings of the FBI, but rather a loose consortium of employees who worked in the Yonkers, White Plains, Bronx, and Queens motor vehicle offices. A false ID, a false registration of false driver's license, not only can put an unsafe driver, an unsafe vehicle on the road, but it can also be used to create a new identity and mask the identity, let's say, of a felon. Like former fugitive Little Vic Amuso, captain of the Lucchese crime family, the FBI alleged it was this woman, Anna Vasquez of the Westchester Motor Vehicles Office, yep. who sold Amuso the phony driver's license, car registration, and photo ID, which helped him establish a false identity and to live on the lam for more than a year. If convicted of the charges, each defendant will face a maximum five years in jail and a fine of $250,000. In New Rochelle, Westchester County, I'm Chris Borgen, Channel 2 News. Right now at 624, time to take a look at some of the stories we're working on for Channel 2 News tonight at 11. Dana Tyler is live in the newsroom. Hello, Dana. Hi, Ernie. Tonight at 11 o'clock, a horrifying murder on Long Island. A mystery, a mother of six is gunned down outside her home. Plus, a call for cooperation. Mayor-elect Rudy Giuliani reaches out to New Yorkers and begins to try to heal a divided city. And New Jersey's new governor-elect looks to the future after her razor-thin victory last night. Those stories and more tonight at 11. Michelle? Okay, thanks, Dane. And still ahead, Bruce Beck with the Giants setting their sights on the Dallas Cowboys. And a kicker who's positively up in the air over this punt. The unusual thing that happened next. And all the sports coming up. relaxing facial and your insurance puts the bill we consider that kind of activity to be fraud thursday if you wonder why your health insurance bills are high i must have got carried away when i was right writing out three seats that's all find out what channel 2 news caught on hidden camera this kind of stuff drives every ethical doctor nuts how far will some doctors go to get your insurance money wouldn't that constitute insurance fraud no no i i watch our special report beauty secret beauty scam thursday at 11 on channel 2 news
Most of the Earth's surface is covered by water, which means most of the Earth is covered by princess. No cruise line sails more ships to more ports of call worldwide than Princess, because it's more than a cruise. It's the love boat. Okay, the votes are in. Here's Bruce. They are voting everywhere. May we have the ballot, please? The winner of the National League Cy Young Award is Greg Maddox of the Atlanta Braves. The right-hander won 20 games as the kingpin of the awesome Atlanta pitching staff and became the first repeat winner since 1965-66. The New York Islanders played well enough to win last night against most NHL teams, but not the Vancouver Canucks, a team projected to be one of the NHL's elite. And the final results are in. The Canucks clipped the Isles 2-1. The game winner came in the second period off a of Vancouver rush. Trevor Linden's first shot is blocked by Ron Hextall, but Dave Babbitt rebounds his own miss and gets it by the Isles netminder. The Canucks, who play the Rangers tonight, are now 8-3. Hextall in the Isles, 3-8-1. A bizarre goal last night in Detroit. A delayed penalty is called against the Red Wings. The Boston Bruins pull their goalie for an extra skater. But Boston's Joseph Stumpel's attempted pass from behind the net gets by everybody and goes all the way down the ice into his own empty net for a Detroit goal. It's important to note that if the puck would have touched the Red Wing player, the referee would have stopped play. But because the puck went straight into the net, it counts as a score. The Red Wings won the game 6-1, and Bruins coach Brian Sutter couldn't believe it. For the Giants, Sunday's game in Dallas will be a reality check, a showdown with the hottest and best team in the NFL. If the Giants realistically have a chance, they have to stop this man, Emmett Smith, who had 237 yards rushing last week against the Eagles. The Cowboys are 5-0 and with Emmett. He's a guy that we got to stop, uh, bottom line. Uh, uh, if he, he's got 150, 200 yards, you know, we're probably not going to win the football game. Right now, he's the best, <laughs> no doubt about it. Um, I think he's still, uh, he has fresh legs because of his holdout, but he's still, no, no doubt about it, the best player probably in the game right now. We all know about the battle Jets quarterback Boomer Esiason and his son Gunner have waged this year against cystic fibrosis. Along the way, Boomer had established a fund to help find a cure for the disease. While he had gotten numerous contributions, today he received a very special one. This is 13-year-old Eric Solon, who recently celebrated his bar mitzvah. He donated all of his gift money to Boomer's cause. The amount, $4,176. I was concerned because uh, the Jets my favorite team. I heard about Boomer and his, like, this problem, and I didn't know what cystic fibrosis was at first. And I found out about it, I found it's pretty bad. So I want to do something. That's new. 